Ebelo, whichever one. Eh? But really thankful for him to come through. I reached out to, to him um, about a month and a half ago. I told him what we're doing at Marketing Fridays. He was more than happy to come through. I think he's got a very, very interesting story to tell. Um, and, you know, we had a conversation earlier on and just in terms of how, as young people, we need to own our stories. Um, you know, I think, and, and I even said to him that he's had what I call a love career um, because he's been doing work that he's loving at that time and then has been able to then commercialize, work with brands, and do some amazing things. Um, from parties to a clothing brand, um, and then to then moving from that to music, owning a record label, uh, and doing some really cool experiences. Um, and right now, his passion being in food. So really, for me, it's um, you know I think it's it's quite great to have him in, and um, and yeah, he'll be sharing, and we'll just be talking. So yeah, you can tell hello. Thank you, much. Yeah, Hello. <laughs> uh, nice to see some clients in the building. Um, so I, I really enjoyed the, the introduction because I think it's kind of like um, there's that underlying question, I think, in Johannesburg specifically, where like people are like, what does that guy actually do? You know, like, so what do you do? You know? And I sometimes it's really condescending, you know, like what, the way people ask that question. Um, but I think um, it's it's kind of like where I am in my life as well, like the kind of like defining what I do. Um, so I'm uh, I'm 35 years old now, um, 36 in a month. Um, I've been throwing parties since I was 19 years old. Um, I threw I began throwing parties when I was at Vits. I had a basketball scholarship to to Vits. Um, Basically, basketball paid for my education. I had no plans of being educated at all. I had no interest in school. Um, it was just a great place to, to hang out and to play hoops. And uh, honestly, <laughs> honestly. And then um, I started fundraising, you know, so we always wanted better kits or better sneakers or whatever. And then I was just in charge of like putting these parties together. And I didn't realize that I was becoming an events planner and coordinator or whatever, whatever it's called today, you know, practitioner. You know? <laughs> and so um, I, I hurt my knee, and then I had to finish school, um, but I didn't want to work. And fortunately, I threw a very, very crazy 21st. Um, I always say that uh, Project X, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Project X, like that's, that's my real life. You know, that was my 21st, that's my real life, you know. And off the strength of that, a lot of the club owners came to me. You know, they're like, oh, you should work for us. So 21 years old, I was running clubs. You know, I was dealing with DJs, I was dealing with artists, I was dealing with brands, um, on site, on the job, didn't go to school for that. And um, what, I, what I didn't enjoy was the music in the clubs. You know, um, I, I really, really liked hip hop. Um, the girls I liked liked hip hop. You know, uh, and, and I was like, I'm gonna create something for the girls I like, you know? Um, so I created Show Love, which was a strictly hip hop party. Um, I think at the time, only Ken Zero was doing hip hop parties with like party people. Um, and through that, I started managing talent, started managing DJs, um, a young guy by the name of AKA. Um, I, I executive produced his first album. Um, in doing that, somehow now I had a record label, which which was never the plan, uh, never the plan, brother. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, and in doing that, now you have a talent ma management agency, and you're doing bookings, and you're dealing with contracts, and you're dealing with flights, and you're dealing with promoters, and you're dealing with brands again. Um, at some point, I was a club owner um, for about two years. What what is called Booth now used to be called Sway. Um, I created a property called ALS, uh, which was All Love Sundays. So um, basically, the craziest Sunday parties ever. We created something called an ALS bomb, which basically destroyed half of the city. Um, I mean, it's crazy. It's a Jaeger bomb with a tequila and an absinthe. That's, that's one shot. You know, and people used to have a lot of those. So sorry, sorry to all those people. Uh, <laughs> Then I just got extremely tired. I got exhausted, you know. Um, 
and I took some time off. I, I cashed out of the club, um, and I just stayed home. You know, I stayed home. I was uh, cooking a lot and eating a lot. You know, I'd, I'd travel a bit and I'd see cool things, and I'd be like, but we don't do this at home. You know, uh, one of the things that I saw was uh, supper clubs. You know, so I'd be in London or New York and they'd have these cool supper clubs, and I'm like, but Joburg is perfect for these things. Like, why don't we have these things, you know? And, and I, I pitched to Biscuit Cognac at the time, um, and the reason I pitched to them is because I thought Remy Martin and, and Hennessy was killing them. You know, and I was like, here's an angle for us to create private dines and really, really build FOMO, you know? Um, and um, obviously we went the celebrity route in the beginning in building this property. And uh, I, was, I was saying to, to Nico earlier that um, I think it was Nomzama, so about 2016, who was like, oh, Tibbs, these are cool, but we thought you were cooking. You know, we, we came to eat your food as opposed to something that you cur curated. You just curated the people, but like there's some chef who comes out and he tells us about foie gras and you know, things that have been done for 17 hours and now it's this big and we don't get it. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So I came to eat your food, so what are you gonna do about it? And so I, I, I decided to spend a hell of a lot of time just getting better and better in the kitchen. Um, I cook every day. Uh, even if it's eggs on toast, I cook every day. Um, I don't know when I'm gonna cook today because I got a flight after this, but I will cook today at some point. <laughs> um, so I've kind of like um, told you a long story of like probably like a 12 year journey. But for me, it culminates into what do I do and who I am. Um, the answer, I answered this question last night on, on Kaya with, uh, with Kojo. And essentially what I've always done is I've, I've researched cool. Like I, I figured this out literally about a week ago. Okay? That um, I always have to position brands in a cool way for them to get to their bottom line. So I have a great client in McCain Veggies, for example. And, you know, and we did a cool pop-up, you know, and traffic and moving the chips and moving the sides. But what happens in the, in the space? You know, the music that's curated, the people that are curated, the, the food that we choose, the beverages of choice, you know, and that's a lot of time spent studying and watching and listening. Um, I tweet a lot. Um, I think the last time I checked, I had over 300,000 tweets. Um, but I interact every day, I, I, I chat every day, I, I have an opinion every day, I probably get dragged every day as well. You know, but being a, a researcher of this means that I always have to be present. You know, I think um, in creating, you know, these, these events and these spaces and these uh, curated vibes that I'm su supposedly an expert on, you know, what I always find is, do you understand who's in the room? You know, do you know who you're even talking to? Um, I'm, a, I'm not a fan of LSM. I'm not a fan of demographic. Um, I think we, we do things because of how we feel as opposed, of, as opposed to what we have. Um, I, I can definitely attest to that in the club space. Trust me, um, I've seen people spend their last, their last, last many, many times because you just want to be a king for that moment. You just want to forget your problem, you know? And so if a brand is going to say that, okay, a 25-year-old, you know, drinks this because he lives here, it's, it's really not true. You know, you, you did that because you wanted to feel that way in that moment, and now you have a hangover, you know? And, uh, and now you're going to have chicken lick in, you know? And that's, that's, the, that's the reality, right? So I, I collect that information. You know, I collect that information. I'm terrible at presentations. This is what I do. Um, I think my, my client can attest to my weird emails and whatever. Like, I'm, I'm not the guy that's going to send you a report and a document or whatever. I'm going to take you to dinner, and I'm going to talk to you. By the end of it, we'll probably be drunk, you know, but you get it, <laughs> you know? You get it, you know? Um, I, I'm here today to answer questions. Um, I... I appreciate people thinking I'm an expert, but I, I think I learn every day. 
Um, I'm literally gonna hop on a on a flight after this to go learn. You know, um, I invest in myself a lot. I think the learning part is something that we we stop at some point. You know, we stop because we have a title. We stop because we have this position, and so now you're in charge of this thing for a corporate or for whatever, and you stop the learning part. You know. Um, for me, I, I don't stop the learning part. I'm in the process of my cookbook currently. Um, I'm supposed to do 100 recipes. Um, I, don't, I don't think I'll even do 50, you know. But what I'm going to do is probably tell you 100 stories, and, and, and food will be related to that. And I think that's what people want from me. You know, people aren't interested in, you know, 25 milligrams or 50 grams or this and that when it comes to me. People want to know the why. You know, people want to know what did AKA and I eat when we created, you know, Victory Lab. You know what I mean? Like, and, and, mm -hmm. and that's what I'm going to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing we kind of spoke about earlier is I, I think as marketers, we really, really don't tap into our stories. You know, like where we're from, why we do certain things, why we even have certain assumptions in life, whether it was your dad or your mother or siblings, that tapping into who we are, I think makes us great marketers because it makes us receptive to each other. You know, I think there's an openness that marketers need to have that I don't think enough of us have. Um, I think there's this competition to be the best, uh, whether it's about the best content or the best anything like, there's this thing where it's like, okay, now I do podcasts, oh no, those guys are doing podcasts. Why can't we all do podcasts, you know? Um, I get asked <clears throat> how, how I'm treated by other chefs. Um, I don't care. You know, I, I literally do not care. Um, I don't cook for other chefs, you know? Um, I wasn't helped by other chefs, and I don't have an issue with other chefs. Um, I, I tap into what I enjoy. In a year, I might not cook at all, you know? And whatever I'm doing in a year, I'm gonna tap into that, and whoever has an issue, I do not care. Um, and I think th that's what we all need. And the reason I do not care is it's not because I'm an asshole, you know. I don't care because I tap into what feels good, and then I want to make the people that want to feel good feel good. You know, the people that w have an issue with that, they can eat at home, you know. Uh, <laughs> um, Please ask me whatever you want to ask me about business. <laughs>
bad business years for me. And I think that's the other thing with these talks is that people don't talk about the bad years. You know, especially like I got a friend that's doing an MBA and I, I ask him questions and everything is just, it's beautiful. Like it's, it's so beautiful. You know, and I'm like, uh, I'm like, that's bullshit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, 2014, 2015 were very bad years for me. Um, and 2016 was a, a year where I decided to like, just like tap into myself, you know, spending a lot of time alone. And what I realized in that year was that 2014 and 2015 were bad because I was tapping into what supposedly you're supposed to do, like at a certain age in your life, a certain period in your life. Um, my friends were getting married, my friends were having kids, my friends are executives of this and that and whatever, they got these portfolios, uh, you know, they're giving talks, you know, I'm giving talks, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, um, but I try to like corporatize Tibello, do you know what I mean? As opposed to making the thing that's working, you know, work better. So I, 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 I literally went left field for like myself. Um, and then I was throwing money at problems. So if something wasn't working, I just threw more money at it. And then now, you've, now you're in the hole, you know? Um, what I've learned and what I do is I, I only do what I enjoy, you know? And it's a, it's, a, it's a longer game. It's not an easy game because saying no to money is not easy, you know? But I think I do good work because I love the work. So I protect the work. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I'm, not, um, I'm not complacent. Um, I have a way about me where I think some people think I'm, I'm lazy, you know, because I'm pretty laid back. But I, I don't do things in front of people as well, you know. So um, I had a eight-course dinner yesterday for clients. Um, and the work began on Monday, you know, like just sourcing, just uh, flavor layering, just building stock, all for two hours of execution, which in the end I made look easy. You know what I mean? And I think um, that's, that's the other part. It's like, it's like that kid that told you he didn't study and then, and then he kills it, <laughs> you know? And it's like, this bastard studied, <laughs> you know? So I, I, I study, I, I study hard, you know? Um, and then I, I, I try to make the games look easy. Yeah. Um, did I answer your question? Yeah. I, I, also di I also digress, apologies. Um, it's still one thing to me. Um, I've always cooked. Um, I used to be a clinically obese child, right? Um, so I've always loved food. My dad used to bribe me with like chumps. I don't know if you guys even know what chumps are. Uh, I was thinking about it, chump had that ad with the hippo and the hippo couldn't open his mouth. Like, how can a hippo not, can never mind. Um, <laughs> But so doctors told my parents that, yo, we got to change this guy's diet or he's going to die, you know. Um, and my, my mother put me on these bland diets that were just depressing me, you know, and uh, I had to exercise a lot. And fortunately, I fell in love with basketball, you know, and I, and I became really, really good. Uh, played, played under 14 until seniors. Um, and I got to travel. So I'd eat something amazing in, like, Belgium. You know, and I'd come home and, and I'd ask my mother to make it. And she's like, dude, I'm not making you that shit. You know, like, I cook for your husband. Like, leave me alone, you know? <laughs> so, and then at the time, um, Jamie Oliver was blowing up. You know, the Naked Chef was blowing up. And I saw this guy has a little herb garden, you know, and he goes and he sources and he's got a basket, you know, and pick and pay or whatever. So they would give us per diem, so I'd, I'd have my own pocket money. So I started buying my own groceries. And I started cooking, and it's just something I did, you know. Um, during that year in 2016, when I was running into like these supper clubs and all of that, it was just like, cool, I'm an insomniac. So it's like 11.30, I want to eat, but there's no place to eat, you know. And building Cafe Thieves has been around those, those little gaps that I saw. You know, like um, it doesn't have to be a fine dine, but I like curated spaces, whether it's the music or it's the art or it's the people. And for me, it's still the same thing as the parties. So it's still feet through the door. It's still um, studying people. It's still you feeling like, or hopefully feeling like you got value for your money. 
because if I throw a wet party, you want your hundred bucks back. You know, if my ribs suck, you want your hundred bucks back. You know what I mean? So for me, it's the same thing. I don't know if the word is structure for me, um, but it's uh, repetition, you know? So tapping into networks, tapping into mentors, tapping into social media, you know, tapping into uh, Netflix and documentaries. Um, I'm just always like, uh, there's a term for like guys in the stock, stock exchange where like they like wired in, you know, like, uh, I'm just always wired in, you know, I'm just always aware. I'm just like, um, it, it, bothers, it bothers the close people in my life a lot. Cause like I'll walk into a place and I'll be like, oh fuck man, I would have put the DJ box over there. You know, like why, why is there a bar over there? Because now there's, there's like a line to the bar, like they should have put it over, like that's me. Like I'm always like tapped in. Um, and uh, the, I don't feel like I'm answering any of you guys' questions. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry, but um, I I just always want more information, and and that helps me with with everything that I'm gonna do next. You know, um, I started building this art collection like late last year, um, and I think I'm gonna build an art property. Like I I don't like the fact that there are no black-owned museums or black-owned art galleries. Um, I think that can tap into food, you know, and I think that can tap back into music. I think it can tap back into fashion, you know? Um, I don't know how I'm gonna go about it, but I know when it happens, people are gonna speak about a rebrand. And, and, and none of these things are rebrands for me. You know, for me, it's, it's all about becoming. So I'm gonna become, you know? I'm, I'm gonna do more, you know? It's, it's really not, I, I, I listen to hip hop every day. You know, I, I speak to AKA every day. You know, like, it's, it's not a new world for me, it's just, 35 now, and I need my Sundays, you know? Like, yeah. Oh, I plan everything. Um, I think my, my thing is that I decide, okay, cool, I decide that I want to immerse myself in the art world. So that's the plan. So maybe now there's no structure or whatever, but like, that's the plan. And then I just move forward. Uh, we, we spoke earlier about how, I think one of the saddest things that I see is um, people sit on ideas. We all have ideas. Everyone in here has a monster idea that, you, that they are sitting on right now. And what I'm blessed with, and I don't know how it came about, is I don't get embarrassed. Do you know what I mean? I've had your MTS gigs, I've had gigs where you could do cartwheels in there and not hit anybody. You know, what I mean? you know what I mean? Like it was empty, empty, empty. You know, but you learn. Um, I, I, the plan is to learn more. So I, I read up on art, I read up on curators, I read up on how to value it, I read up on how to store it, how to, um, I read up on everything. And then I, I pick up art all the time. And then hopefully at some point, I'm just gonna have an angle, do you know what I mean? So while giving myself all this information, you know, the plan is to eventually have an angle. And then when I have an art property, the reason it will be different is because of all the stuff that I've gathered. Um, uh, it's, it's just like food, huh? You know, it's just like cuisine, you know? It's like the little things that you have to do to make a dish great. You know, I, I see it with my friends. Oh, this is me digressing again, by the way. I see it with my friends all the time where he, my, my boy will cook a steak and he'll be like, yeah, but teams, it doesn't look like yours, you know? I'm like, okay, I can tell you just defrosted this. So you defrosted it and you hoped for the best. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> right? You know? Whereas I told you, take it out last night, go to sleep. Season it, season it in the morning, let it sit all day, cook it for three minutes, and look at the difference. You've given, you've given it time, you know? It's, it's amazing now because you've given it time, and I think that's what I try and do with everything, is give everything time.
I think the I think the truth like saves everybody time, eh? You know, and um, if if you're trying to offer value, you know, I think let's just get to it. You know, so sorry, man, it's been a while. I know I haven't been in touch, but uh, I have this thing. You know, I think it it could benefit us both, and let's get to it. You know, like yeah. I answered your question, huh? So I, I have to check because sometimes I don't answer questions. <laughs> I think relevance is pretty subjective because um, I think I'm irrelevant to many people. Um, I think what just keeps me um, in the game is is love of the game and trying to figure out angles in the game. Um, we all get older. You know, like my father always says that to me, like, like we've both been young, but you've never been old. You know, and, and like with the new kid on the block, I think sometimes we panic, you know, because you, we think, you know, your spot is going to be taken. But there's there's more to create. There's there's more that existed before you, you know. Um, and so relevance for me, it's 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 really subjective. I've never, ever, ever had an idea that was embraced in the beginning, like not once, you know? Um, and what, I, what I'm not afraid to do is to do this thing and get one person to buy in and then tap into their, their network and they get one person to buy in. Um, I, that's actually my advice all the time when people want to get into events. I'm like, you're trying to throw a conference and a concert and whatever, but like your bras suck. You know what I mean? Like you can't you can't put together games night. Do you know what I mean? Like you had a bride and there's no chakalaka or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like you gotta focus on taking care of one person, then five people, then ten. Um, and I think ideas are the same. So we have this thing where you want your idea to pop for thousands of people immediately. But your your circle, why don't you use them as tastemakers? And again, that's that's what I was speaking about in terms of networking. We think networking is networking with strangers. Mm -hmm. Like, do you network with your network? Like, do you network with your friends? You know, so your boy might golf with the guy that you need, but you don't know that. So now you're trying to find this guy, you, you're harassing his PA, but your boy is there. Yeah. You know, your boy is right there. So your, your people, do they even know what you're into? I, sometimes I'm like, I see, I see my boys on the news, I'm like, oh, okay. Like, when you start doing that, you know? And you're in a WhatsApp group with this guy, mm. you know? But are we tapping into each other, you know? And then don't, don't be afraid of ideas growing organically because organic isn't as slow as we think, you know? You start today with one person, you look up 12 months from now, and it's a thing, mm. you know? That is exactly what I'm learning, you know. So for now, I, I don't choose. What I, what I do focus on is South African artists and black South African artists. That's like what I'm focused on now. Um, in terms of modern, traditional, I'm learning. So if I, if I see something I like, I, I'll speak to the curator. Uh, so, so there's this guy, Tandung Gwenya, who I really like right now. Um, and I saw he was, he was at a turbine art fair as well. So I picked up about six of his pieces like last year and, and like now it seems like he's about to blow up, you know, and so I'm glad I picked up those pieces. But literally I didn't even pick them up because I thought he was gonna blow up. I just really, really liked his work. And um, it's not even a business for me yet in terms of my collection, but hopefully it becomes one. The name of my company is show love, right? And initially when I, when I started, you know, uh, bless you, you know, when I started years ago, I felt like no one was showing me love. You know, bless you. Uh, uh, you know, um, it was just a cool name, show love, no one understood, I, I understood. Uh, and through the process and through the years, you know, I've been behind talent, you know, I've been behind cool campaigns, 
you know. And I think my purpose is to is to kind of like assist, you know. Uh, the, the the guys that I really admire are like your Steve Stouts, you know, like your like your Russells and like your your Leo Cohens. I like I always uh, study the guy behind the guy, you know. And I think that's my purpose. Uh, it might not always be humans, you know, but um, I like I like the where this thing can go. I like where we could possibly take this thing, um, and I like being behind that. Um, that's my purpose. Um, both. I mean, I have a team. I uh, have employees. Um, I have now recently taken on what some people would consider a manager, but I, I consider him my partner um, because the the food side of Teebs is really, really taken off. Um, but I, I just want to cook, you know, so now I've handed over the business side of Teebs cooking to someone else so that I, I can just cook and I can just uh, hopefully keep doing cool things for my clients. Um, so. That's a business decision, which was very, very difficult for me, you know, because now I'm no longer the guy behind the guy, you know. Um, but I think it's important. Um, I think great things are about to happen because of that decision. Um, and like I said, he's, he's my partner, he's not my manager. So, I mean, I, I'm an only child, so I've been talking to myself for a long time. You know? <laughs> you know, um, but we spoke about how I think, in some way or form, we all need to kind of tap into some sort of industrial psychology. Mm -hmm. you know? um, and there's, a, there's the stamina. There's a the stamina of entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. you know? So during the good years, do you have the discipline to, do you have the discipline for foresight? Right? Because when money is coming in, it feels like money is always going to come in. So do you have the discipline for your quiet years? Now, your quiet years, do you have the mental stamina to, to believe that you know, you, you're going to come back? Mm -hmm. you know, and not only are you going to come back, are you going to be stronger than ever? You know? And those are the conversations that I'm constantly having with myself. Mm -hmm. So if, uh, if something happens on a plate and this didn't work out, you know, I, I go back and I think it through. Like, mm -hmm. there's, there's something, there's the fundamentals that there's something I missed. Mm -hmm. There's something I didn't do because the reason why it's always perfect is because you don't skip steps. So I need to figure out where's, where's the, the step that I skipped, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I think the, the other conversation is, it's one I tr I'm trying to have less of, is you worry about people, you know? Like, um, there's, there's competition, you know, there's sabotage. This is this is the real world, you know. You know, and sometimes you gotta wonder if people are in your life for good reasons or because you are convenient, you know. Um, so I spend a lot of time just reading people and having a conversation about myself about people. Mm. You know what I mean? So, um, and I think I usually make good decisions. Mm. Um, I, I know when to walk away without causing a scene. Mm. You know. You know, but sometimes you have to walk away. It's 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 a weird it's a weird one for me currently. Well, it's not weird, but all the guys that I used to admire have kind of like either become friends or become enemies. Do you know what I mean? And it's and that's just how it goes in business. You know, mm -hmm. um, so I do have I have younger guys that I consider mentors now. Mm -hmm. You know, guys that are doing really great, like, uh, like a Joe Human, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. I, think, I, think, I think he's, I tell him all the time that he doesn't know how good he is. Mm -hmm. You know, I think, I think he's insane, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I have Unandi uh, Mamagashaga, Nandin Lepo. You know, I think she's incredible. I think in terms of um, events, I think she's one of the greatest to ever do it. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, f it, even before her time with the weekend social, and now would feel good. I think she's one of the greats, but sh I think she's one of the greats because how she constantly taps in. Mm -hmm. You know, like Nandi's gigs are Nandi's gigs. Like you can tell, like you can feel it. Mm -hmm. You know, from the curation of the music to 
just the choice of venue, everything. Mm -hmm. um, I have uh, great, great uh, love and admiration for Andile Kumalo, mm -hmm. um, who I, fortunately, he, we're friends now, but the greatest lesson he ever taught me is understanding leverage. Like, we all need leverage. Mm -hmm. Like, in every situation, think about every situation in your life, business, personal, whatever, you need leverage. You need to understand it. You also need to understand that when you have it, how to not abuse it. Mm -hmm. You know, because sometimes when people have the upper hand, they become abusive. Mm -hmm. You know, and then when the tables turn, you know, now, now you're stuck. But negotiations, mm -hmm. um, just day to day, we all need leverage. Mm -hmm. um, I got some friends. Uh, my former trader, you know, very, very smart guy. You know, he probably gets dragged a little bit more than me on Twitter, you know. Um, Luis Ocola, very, very opinionated guy, but honest in his ways. Um, and parents, you know, I'm very, very blessed to still have my parents. Um, my parents are much older than me. Like, my father had me at 40. You know, so there's like, a, well, that's gonna happen to me. I mean, I don't have any kids that I know of. <laughs> you know? You know? Um, but there was a big, big generational gap between my parents and I growing up, you know? Um, and probably like the last 10 years, we became friends, you know? And a lot of good advice, you know, because once again, they've, they've seen what you've seen, you know? Before we released the first album, like uh, AKA and I had been working for three years, you know? Um, and I think he only really, I mean, Alter Ego did well, but he only became super mega, like, with levels, mm. you know? Um, and I think it was a, more of a respect thing from the game as well, other than obviously him putting out, you know, great music. Um, the time aspect, and the learning aspect is something that fortunately I enjoy. You know, it's, uh, I think some people feel like they have to learn or they're forced to learn. Mm -hmm. Like, I love learning, do you know what I mean? And, and, I, and I try my, my hardest to remain teachable. You know, I, I try and be more open than intelligent. You know, I try to be open to intelligent people, you know, and just soak this stuff in. And then I spend a lot of time by myself and then something happens. You know, an idea happens and it's clear. Like, uh, and if it's not clear, I don't, I don't touch it. Do you know what I mean? So, but um, time, I think that's the underlying thing I've said today, is just time, learning, patience, and then um, confidence, man. You know, don't be embarrassed to fail forward. You know, like, dude, just start. Like, start, please start, you know, like, the whole thing of, is the market ready? If the market's ready, you're late. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Like, let's, let's build new markets. Let's try. You know, just start. I, 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 I didn't, I mean, I was, I was 18. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Uh, you know? Uh, <laughs> um, I, I actually, I actually want to, at some point, go back to some sort of formal education, um, simply because uh, it's a personal challenge to myself. It's not even for that particular learning. Um, I, it's, like, it's like taking liquor breaks, do you know what I mean? It's for me, do you know what I mean? I want to know if I can have a good time, you know, without liquor. Like, I do things, weird things like that. And like, uh, so the, the learning part back in the day was just because of the institution you know, and the tutorials and the essays and that type of stuff. Uh, but the learning part in general, I, I love. The business partner that I've taken on, um, basically, I've always had respect for him in terms of what he's done on a brand level. So he was, I don't know if you ever saw our Vaseline campaign, like he was behind that. He was behind Black Coffee's Axe campaign. Um, he's behind Boiti's deodorant. Um, he's behind uh, Ricky and Remy Martin. Mm -hmm. So uh, for me, he, he's the best. Mm -hmm. 
you know, like, um, and, and when, I, when I approached him and I told him that he's the best, he, like, he thought I was crazy, you know? But the, the whole thing for me is I like building things, you know? So right now it's the management of teams, but I know we're going to build things, you know? I know that when, if I get tired of this food thing, he's still the guy that I'm going to build stuff with. You know, and these are all from just conversations. Um, I, I talk to people a lot, you know, and sometimes when I approach people with ideas, like it shocks them. But I'm like, no, we spoke about this and you don't, you don't understand that we can do this thing, you know? Um, and sometimes people choose you as well, like as opposed to you choosing them. Right? <laughs>